thank you also Hakimani for inviting me and being present here today. All protocol observed, I would like to address you, my sisters and brothers. Devolution. In this short exposition, I would like to adopt is it already for me, this one? Three minutes left? No. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, would like, I would like to adopt the pastoral approach. See, judge, and act. In the first stage of seeing, where do we come from? in issue of devolution. Although the word was not there, devolution, participation of everybody, but for Kenya, or rather the whole African continent, it's not a new word. Pre-colonial time, the chief was a very important person. But the chief would not be a chief if he was an egoistic person, if he did not have experience of community, if he did not increase the community spirit. There was no place for a chief if he did not take at heart the interests of the community. Community life was the achievement of all. With colonialism, the chief became an instrument of the colonial power. Colonialism destroyed community spirit because feared the power of the common people. So, they rather dealt with individuals, dividing the community, with the result that even our African value of being together was not, or rather, was not reigning anymore and it was being challenged greatly. We got independence. With independence, again, this communal spirit had resurfaced. It is the, it is the time of Ujama in Tanzania. It is the time of Harambe in Kenya. It is the time where we, as Africans, have recognized that during colonial times we have lost a very important potential in achieving our own good and protecting ourselves from the monster of egoism. But what is our experience? Since independence, although our fathers who fought for independence have based this achievement of independence from colonialism on the basis of the Harambe. However, since independence, our true experience was never of total cohesiveness. Coming together, all of us was never achieved totally. The monster of tribalism, ethnicity, was always present. In fact, very often, those who reigned were always carrying with them the whole family, the whole tribe. And leaving out those who, for some reason or another, were not part of the clan, of the ethnic group, or the tribe which supported that political power. We were shocked 
by the 2007-2008 ethnic clashes. But we remember, this was the peak after very bad experiences that we had before these tribal clashes. Tribal clashes were before used as an instrument for political gain, to change the electoral political map of this country, people were moved from one part of the country to another. People were killed to eliminate a potential threat for my political career. The result was our new constitution. We sat down after a long time of crime that we need to reconcile, that we need to come together. Our own constitution, the new one of three years of age, is a constitution which took all this in mind, what I have said. To see is not to forget where we have come from. We need to judge where we are today. And I think I need not to repeat what His Grace has said and the Honorable Senator have just said to us. We are in a situation where we are struggling. We have values. We still feel the need to be together. But there are some threats for this communality living together. The threat of corruption. On my side, as one of the shepherds in this country, corruption is one of the biggest sins, and as we call it in our Catholic Church, it's one of the biggest mortal sins, which needs to be really considered as a mortal sin. It's not only putting in debt, moral debt, the one who committed, but it is also fructifying in many debts through poverty, through material debts, by the clashes, by the debts that we have seen on the road, all over. Corruption needs to be our main target. The second mortal sin, which is actually threatening devolution, is greed. Is greed. Everybody who is committing the sin would like to become a rich person from the first day. And this by exploiting not only the other rich, this comes from colonial times, when we were actually taking money or taking property from a colonial master. Nowadays, we are stealing, we are taking from the poor people. And that's what I always say. Somebody tells me, but even in other countries there is corruption. Yes, there is corruption. But whereas in some other countries, if you steal, the other person is not going to die, in our country, if you steal, especially the poor, who are living in the villages where they don't have electricity, where they don't have water, where they don't have enough health services, you are stealing from a person who because of your stealing, because of your corruption, you are killing these people. It's a very serious moral sin, which we cannot let go. What is the way forward for a true devolution? And as a Catholic bishop, I would suggest two important suggestions which come from the Catholic teaching of the Church. First of all, if devolution is to be truly enacted in our country, we need to understand and follow the principle of subsidiarity. The principle of subsidiarity is a principle 
which accepts that the smaller part of the society, what every smaller part of the society can do, the bigger part of the society will allow or even enhance the power of the smaller part. In our case, the main power is in the hands of the government, of the national government. He has the role to control and to manage the community on the national scale. But the county, as we have heard well already, is the smaller part of the society, but it is to manage its own affairs because it could be more transparent and more accountable and nearer to the people. If we don't depart with this principle, we would be having litigation between the central government and the county government. If we do not understand that the smaller part of the society can achieve, but not alone, through the help of the bigger part of the society, as in our case we are saying, the central government is to help that the county will achieve its own responsibilities and would be able to be accountable to what it is doing, not only to the main government, but also to the people which are nearer to them. The other principle in the Catholic teaching of the Church is solidarity. Our fear as bishops and many others was that many of the counties were formed alongside tribal values, tribal numbers, tribal sections of our country. What does this mean? That because divisions were done on this criteria very often, what is going to happen if we are not paying attention is that the county will be formed up of those who govern it from one certain tribe. With the consequence that the minority group in that county can be very easily excluded. As we are saying for the main government, for the central government, we say it also to the county. Unless there is solidarity, bringing together all the potentialities in that county without distinction of tribe, of age, or of gender, or of religion, we cannot achieve total devolution. It will be a lame devolution because it is not taking care of all those who are part of that county. With these two principles, I should say that the big achievement that we have done in coming together and agreeing on devolution, it would become very fruitful and it will achieve what it was meant for. To give to the people a service because it is nearer to the people, to be accountable to the people, to be ready to hear to the people because it has a role in the whole country as a part of it. But at the same time, this would be achieved if this is done by everybody. We need to return to the drawing book of our independence, of our making us as a country, that we need to be truly achieving a Harambe politics where we come together to join hands and be together for our own good and development. Thank you.